Hi, my name's Mark, one of the pastors at Trillium. Welcome to our second annual pre-recorded Christmas Eve service. When we pre-recorded our first service a year ago, I think many of us thought it would be a one-time event. But here we are a second time, and I think it's dawning on a few of us that maybe this is a permanent feature of our church. Not because COVID will continue forever, but because this form gives us an opportunity to tell the story of Jesus to a much wider circle of people. It gives us a chance to tell the story to those in the congregation who can't come in person to our building at any point. But it also gives us a chance to share the story with others who are interested in hearing about the birth of Jesus Christ, born in a stable in a little town of Bethlehem in a backward province in the great empire. It's still a magnificent story. Angels and shepherds and wise men. A powerful story of rebirth too for us. We, we come to not only hear about the birth of Jesus born long ago, but also his birth, his awakening in us today. You see, Jesus was born into the world for a purpose, to reveal God's nature and God's purpose to us as human beings, and to invite us to follow him on the journey to our own rebirth and awakening to the knowledge that we are too children of God. Part of one glorious life-giving family, we come together today to sing the songs and to hear the word spoken to us. Let us pray. God, we, we celebrate the birth of Jesus, for in his birth is also our own. It's his, in his awakening to the human experience, nonetheless, we can be now allowed to awaken to your experience. As Jesus became human, now he invites us to join him in becoming divine. We pray for the awakening of his life within us as we join with him in this wonderful journey through life. We are part of you, Lord. We always have been. And we are gloriously thankful that you are a part of us. We pray this in your name. Amen.
God tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise and that his seed will bruise the serpent's head. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. I will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of the grains. By the sweat of your brow will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Second lesson, Genesis 22. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. 
Then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies, and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me. People who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate 
commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Christ will bring is foreshown. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance, nor make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. 
the leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion, and a little child will lead them all. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he. And his soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary soul rejoices for yonder. taught us to love one another his love was love and his gospel is peace chains shall we break for the slave
the angel Gabriel announces the birth of the Messiah to Mary. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Luke 2, the Christ is born in Bethlehem. 
that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. The shepherds hear the good news of the angel and go to the manger. That night, there are shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. The radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. 
the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. You will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see th these things that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was a baby lying in the manger. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem in the land of Judea, are not least among the ruling cities of Judea, for a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. For God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Oh, God. 
The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him, and nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the Word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. The singer-songwriter Joan Osborne wrote a song a couple of decades back called One of Us. And in the song she says this, she says, If God had a name, what would it be? And would you call it to his face? If you were faced with him in all his glory, what would you ask if you had just one question? What if God was one of us? Just a slob like one of us. Just a stranger on the bus trying to make his way home. I first heard the song, One of Us, quite a few years ago when I was visiting a congregation and they were showing a slideshow of the faces of the congregation in the background the song was playing. You know, faces, old faces, young faces, happy faces, sad faces, crusty faces, beautiful faces, beaten faces, shriveled faces smiling faces. 
You know, we've heard the story of the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem so many times that perhaps the, the, the fundamental question escapes us. What would it mean if God became one of us, the creator of the universe, the universal spirit, the source, the higher power, becoming one of us in a stable in Bethlehem? What would he or she look like? Actually, we believe that God did become one of us, born in a stable in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago, became one of us. And again, it's worth contemplating what that might mean for us and for the world. See, Jesus was born with no prestige, no power, no influence, no credibility in one sense. He was born in a backward province in the great empire. To parents of limited means, he had very little social power to draw upon. Not exactly what we would have expected, I think, if God were to become one of us. I think deep down we would presume that, that if God were to become one of us, God would be born into a, a prestigious or, or an elite family in a central location connected to the military and economic power of the world. Caesar Augustus, the Roman Empire emperor, who was immensely wealthy and commanded 30 Roman legions, uh, was also called the Son of God at the time of Jesus, was also called the Son of God. What do you suppose is the difference between these two sons of God? Jesus was sent by God into the world to awaken us to the truth about ourselves. He, he, he came not just for the sake of being born into the human condition, but he came for a purpose, to, to teach us about God and to show us and reveal to us God's nature and then to call us into our own awakening, our own birth. A rebirth, sometimes in the Christmas carols tradition. Bethlehem is a call, you know, to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but it's also an opportunity for us to reflect on our own rebirth. When the awakening of the light of the Son of God takes shape within us as well. And it seems to me it's now time to embrace this truth and then let the heaven's light shine out from us. Jesus, it was said, was born a king Yet where is his kingdom? Jesus, it was said, was born a king, but who belongs to this kingdom? And where does this realm extend? And who will find their way to it? Watch with me, angels, watch with me today. Let all God's holy thoughts surround me and be still with me while heaven's child is born. Let earthly sounds be quiet and the sights to which I am accustomed disappear. Let Christ be welcomed where he is at home, and let him hear the sounds he understands and see but sights which show his Father's love. Let him no longer be stranger here, for he is born again in me today. Your Son is welcome, Father. He has come to save me from the evil self I have made. He is the self you have given me. He is but what I really am in truth. He is the child you love above all things. He is myself as you created me. Safe in your arms, let me receive you through the child who was born in Bethlehem. If God had a name, what would it be? And would you call it to his face? If you were faced with him in all his glory, what would you ask if you had just one question? What if God was one of us, just a slob like one of us? just a stranger on the bus trying to make his way home.
sacred light of Christmas Day shine upon you. May the sacred truth of the birth of Christ be revealed through you. May you be the ambassador, the emissary of divine light to all you meet, to the people who live right around you, and also to the strangers you meet. Have it be that today or tomorrow, when people meet you, they meet the incarnate God in the world who is love and only love. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto everlasting life. And we say together, Amen. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Gather near to us once more. Through the years we all will be together. If the fates allow, hang a shining star. Thank you.